Let us, <clears throat> Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God. For the Lord our God, the, the Almighty reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are son, the Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enable us, we pray, Almighty God, to proclaim the power of the risen Lord, that we who have received the pledge of his gift may come to possess all he gives when it is fully revealed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph, also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite, a Cypriot by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned. Then he brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robed, robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm, not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old, from everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel and you do not understand this. Amen, amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. So again, we're brought here, continuing our reading yesterday of John, at early on in John's Gospel, where he's foreshadowing these things which are now coming about. And so... With Nicodemus, who is himself a scholar and a scribe, he speaks to him and tries to help to bring along his faith. And so he speaks about how the wind blows where it wills, speaking about the Holy Spirit. And he points out that, you know, you are a scholar of the law and you do not understand these things. 
And he doesn't say this to condemn him, but to point out that you would not understand these things because this is a message that is coming down from the Father which he is revealing. There is more that Jesus is revealing that helps to illuminate what these, what these scriptures which speak of him tell about. And so he is able to then give more than Nicodemus could understand. And we see Nicodemus beginning to be softened by this as he's trying to grasp what the Lord is saying to him. And what does he speak to him? How does this happen that one can be born of the Holy Spirit? How does this happen that one can be led by the Holy Spirit? Well, he answers at the bottom of this passage and he speaks about his own cross. Just as Moses was lifted up, so he will be lifted up. And that lifting up is one of both that physical lifting up on the cross, but also that sign of to lift someone up is to exalt them. And so you know that Jesus is lifted up and that's seen as one this great, rather condemnation of him when he's lifted up as a criminal, but also that exaltation seeing the cross as that throne, as that place of exaltation where he stands above all else. And in light of the resurrection, we're able to see it in that light. And because of the cross, we are able to be born from above, able to have this eternal life open to us, able to be led by the Holy Spirit. And we continue to see this play out in the Acts of the Apostles, as it speaks about how they were of one accord and how those early disciples were selling everything that they had, placing the apostles' feet, distributing it to those in need, so that each was living solely for the kingdom of God. And we're introduced here to one of the, play the key players throughout the rest of Acts, which is Barnabas, called Joseph. And he's one who becomes himself a well-known disciple, and is the one that then they put first under Paul's tutelage, or they put Paul under his tutelage, so that the two of them can go out together, Barnabas being the more confirmed disciple. But he, being the son of encouragement, is able to kind of take that second place more and more, and we start hearing later on about, less about Barnabas and Paul, and then more about Paul and Barnabas, and then just Paul. And so we see here how this begins with this disciple who is hearing these things, willing to give his life to sell all that he has for this. So then when the fame comes his way, he becomes well-known, well-respected, he's able likewise to give that over as well when the time comes. And today the church also celebrates the feast of St. Martin I, who is the last pope to be martyred. And so he was reigning in the 600s, and this was during the last of what they would call the towards the end of what they would call the Christological councils. And so they're arguing in the East about whether Christ had one or two wills. Did he have a human will or just a divine will? And the emperors and the patriarchs had affirmed that it was only one will. And the emperor said there was to be silence on the matter, no more conversation about it. But Martin held a council himself, becoming pope, and proclaim that, that truth that Christ had a truly human will and also the divine will. And for speaking this truth against the emperors and against even the other religious authorities at the time, the emperor in Constantinople sent troops and a delegation from Constantinople across the empire over to Rome to arrest him and to bring him back. And there in Constantinople he was tortured and exiled and died from that ill treatment. And so it says in the collect for him, it speaks about how we desire to have that invincible strength of will to stand up for the truth. That our will might be invincible as was St. Martin's who in his frailty and old age was still able to proclaim this truth and even suffer the consequences for it. So we ask the Lord today for that invincible strength of will to continue to follow where our Lord leads us, continue this process of growing as his disciples, to let go and to give to him all that he has given us so that we might be fully at his service wherever he may lead us. Knowing that our God wishes only the best for all of his children, we confidently bring these prayers before him. 
May our Holy Mother Church, for our Holy Mother Church, may the Lord continue to bless her and protect her from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government officials, may they be perfected by God in their desire to do His will in their civil service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all suffering from chronic illness, may the healing power of Christ grant them patience and peace in their distress. We pray to the Lord. For the neophytes in our community recently initiated into the Catholic Church, may the Lord continue to increase their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of Christ, may they soon be welcomed into the fullness of eternal joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Deacon John Dumshat, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. God of life and love, to you we entrust the needs of our world. Hear the prayers which we offer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and yours. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Who are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. 
Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Pope St. Martin, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia.
those joining us online, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, the prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help to this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. <laughs>